Hi, this is Randy Kirk, and I promise you that this is the most important video that I've ever made. And I've made a lot of them. Everybody in the investment community is hoping that they can pick the next Tesla. I'm going to make the claim, and I encourage you in the comments below or on Twitter or anywhere else to challenge my assessment. But here we go. I'm going to make the claim that Tesla is the next Tesla, but it's Tesla Energy specifically that is the next Tesla. The story starts here. The story starts with Elon Musk making several comments. The comments would be that Tesla Energy will eventually be larger than, or at least as large as, the automotive division. I don't think that Elon would have made that comment if he didn't believe it to be true. When will this happen? It's a really hard guess to make unless you take into consideration another comment by Elon Musk. He has stated that in order for the world to transition to electricity or to convert to renewable fuels by the year 2030, the world will need to make about 10 terawatts of energy through wind solar battery. He has claimed that Tesla as a company will make about three of those terawatts, or it's a little bit unclear, possibly will make one terawatt and buy two terawatts from other makers. So his goal is that Tesla as a company will have three terawatts of manufactured batteries that they will turn into products. Number three statement by Elon Musk. He has claimed that he will make 20 million cars by 2030. It will take, now when I say cars, that might mean vehicles. So it could be tars, cars, trucks, semi-trucks, and other vehicles. For the purposes of this analysis, that would mean that about one of these terawatt hours that he hopes to make or buy in 2030 will go into the production of cars or other vehicles. This would leave about two terawatts available for other purposes. The argument could be made that that analysis that I just did might be a little thin if he's making a lot of semi-trucks. If he's making a lot of semi-trucks, that would eat into some of that other terawatt hour that we're talking about. So, but let's um, split the difference. Let's say that 1.5 terawatts will go into energy storage. That would be the, uh, the Tesla power walls, that would be the mega packs and any other products that might be made between now and then that are designed to store energy. Now then, what does that mean if he was to make 1.5 terawatts or buy for energy storage in 2030? That would mean at let's just take a $500 per kilowatt hour as an estimate of what that, those energy storage products would retail at or sell at to the to the purchaser. That would give us about $750 billion worth of sales. $750 billion is twice as large, three times as large as the largest companies in the world today in retail sales. I could stop here. That could be the end of the at the end of the conversation. That would be interesting enough on its own. Maybe somehow those uh, the cost of those uh, energy components drops and it's only $400. Um, that would make it a $600 billion. Let's drop it even further to only $300 uh, per kilowatt hour. That would still make it a $450 billion enterprise larger than any existing enterprise on Earth today. Okay, so that's how we get to Tesla Energy being the next Tesla. By itself, standing alone as a separate company, it will be the largest company in the world by 2030 if Elon hits his goals. Now, how hard would it be to get to those goals? My next claim will be, it won't be hard at all. How do I make such a claim? Very few people seem to be aware that Elon Musk built a brand new factory in Lathrop, California during the last 14 months. 
from groundbreaking until first product was approximately one year. That factory is capable of creating 40 gigawatt hours of, of uh, energy storage just from that one facility. At 40 gigawatts, that's about right now based on the price that they sell those uh, energy storage packs or mega packs. This 40 gigawatts will produce approximately $30 billion in sales. It might be as high as 40. It's possible there would be a little under $30 billion in sales, but we'll just go with the $30 billion figure. $30 billion a year is not that much shy of what Tesla generates in revenues each time it builds a new factory like Berlin. So this one little factory that took one year to build is gonna create almost as much total volume as Berlin or Austin first phase. This factory was produced in a year. We don't know if they're going to build a full out 40 gigawatts in 2023, they might be. It's hard to imagine that the ramp on this very simple uh, container full of batteries is going to be that hard to do, but it might be harder than I think. You basically are putting batteries into a big container, you're wiring them up, you're creating some uh, capabilities to keep fires from happening and to provide ventilation and whatnot, but it doesn't look like it's a very complicated product to make. Once you have Lathrop ramping up well, it shouldn't be difficult to expand Lathrop or start creating additional similar factories all over the world. One in the Midwest, one in Texas, one on the East Coast, one in Canada, one in the UK, one in Europe, maybe two in Europe, several in China, some in Southeast Asia, one in Australia. You get my point. You just start cookie cuttering these things because again, it isn't nearly as complex as putting together the factory required for cars. They won't run into nearly as many environmental issues and concerns as they did in Berlin, uh, producing that factory there. So start cu cookie cuttering these, uh, comp these uh, factories. And all of a sudden you could have two of these or three of these by 2024. You could have five or six of them by 2025. And you need to in order to get to the goal that Elon Musk set of producing approximately 1.5 terawatts of energy storage by 2030. Once the street, once Wall Street and retail investors understand and recognize how fast this ramp can happen, it isn't as sexy as cars. It isn't as sexy as being an automotive company. So people are not paying any attention to it. But once it's clear, that might be at the first quarter earnings report, when they start reporting significant earnings from energy. It might take until the second quarter earnings report, maybe the third. There's going to be a point next year when everybody is gonna get it, that this ramp is taking place. Other kinds of catalysts you might look for would be the announcement of a second Lathrop being built, or a third or a fourth. Those will be other catalysts where finally Wall Street and retail investors might begin to understand the consequence of this ramp. One last question that many of you may have is where are the batteries and the raw materials going to come from? Once again, I'm just going based on Elon Musk's own statements. He made the statement recently that there is plenty of batteries. They have enough batteries. There are battery factories being built all over the world. Every other day, it seems you're hearing about another company, the primary, the, the CATLs and the Panasonics, et cetera, that are announcing locations, mostly in the United States, but elsewhere throughout the world of these battery factories being put in place. Of course, Tesla is in the process of ramping over 200 gigawatt hours of their 4680 cells um, in Austin and in Berlin. My guess would be they're already on the way. There's probably already planning going into Shanghai to also produce battery cells there. Could be wrong. They may not uh, intend to do that at all, but that would be a good guess. Tesla will, in short order, if the 4680 completely ramps, they will be one of the largest battery manufacturers in the world. So this, the resources for batteries 
at least for the next couple of years, apparently are in place. This could be wrong, but I'm just going based on what Elon Musk said. He's got that covered. We also know that he recognizes that there's going to be raw material and in mining and also in the processing of these materials. It's going to be critical limiting factors if there's not enough material mined and if there's not enough material that is processed uh, into the uh, material that is needed for the factories themselves. Those things are also being handled at this time. Nobody, it's your guess is as good as mine, as good as mine, as to whether there's enough lithium and enough nickel, which seem to have been the two most highly, most critical uh, limiting factors. However, just in the last few weeks, there have been multiple reports of sodium and sulfur becoming important additional components that can you that can replace partially or totally the lithium and nickel that are in short supply. My best guess as of right now is that Tesla has plenty of batteries and refined raw materials lined up to take them to their goals in 2030. That's just my guess. You might have your own guess. I'd love to hear in the comments below. If you like this content, if you like, if you'd like more like this, please subscribe and please like this in order to, to encourage other people to view this video. This is Randy Kurt. Thank you for watching. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.